trying to like people please your way through interactions is like actually unkind. Kind of like lying in a way. To say. Had a breast reduction oh she did yeah really i guess so do you have before and afters so this is a people article that says Nicki minaj's decision to get a breast reduction was cemented by her 2022 met gala look because she recalled her chest quote spilling out at the 2022 met gala while looking back at her life and looks with vogue well, did she have uh augmentation prior or was her i don't natural think so Small boobs are in, pumpkin. You did it just in time. But also for real, can we talk about what a functional problem it is to have a part of your body that you can't remove or minimize or like you can't do anything about oh, yeah. it. That like buying supportive undergarments for is just like prohibitively expensive and difficult to do. Oh, exp- like yeah. there was a point that I was buying bras from Polish websites, like the website wasn't in English. No, and yeah. like I had no idea how much the conversion would turn out and to like, be. Just please God fit. Yes, because like the subreddit, <laughs> like a bra that fits subreddit said that those would be like the best suited for yeah. my breast size and shape. Also, could we just talk like, about how also it is interesting now too, how like even after your surgery, you were mm-hmm. explaining to me the other day how like you're afraid they're gonna yes. like come back. Yes. Or like I keep waiting to, to like, wake up and look in the mirror and yeah. be like, oh no. Like they came they put back. Them back. Yeah. Or like, like they came back or something. Yeah. yeah. I just yeah. it doesn't make it's crazy. It's it's just so I can't imagine being so encumbered. Mm-hmm. Like just yes. all the things you've described to me. It's wild. Yeah. Do you have any more thoughts now that you've like, like gone to recovery? experience experience like life outside? Do you feel like you're out of recovery yet? Or do you feel like you're still I feel like we're pretty close. Yeah. Really, the only thing that I'm like waiting for is just the muscle soreness to go away because I'm still oh. doing stretches and stuff yeah. to like get my range of motion back. But the other thing that I haven't done yet is exercise, and I feel like that's going to be the big. The true. One. Yeah. Do they? What is the timeline on that? Or but yeah, we have technically I'm allowed to now. Yeah, but like feeling comfortable and safe to do yeah. so are two different things. Yeah. No. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and also, um, I don't own a sports bra. Like oh. at this point in my life, yeah. I own surgical bras, which I'm not super keen on wearing for obvious reasons, um, and bralettes, which yeah. are like, you know, for lounging. Of course, of course. Um, and not that they're not like compressive to some degree because they are. But not for like strenuous physical activity. Because I want to go running. Yeah. And so I need to put on a sports bra that's like, you I know? think it's so crazy to me after taking a break, you can just go run. Like for me, like I have to run constantly yeah. to not feel like my joints want to kill me. Really? Um, oh, yeah. Like, if I, the longer I take from running, that's why normally, too, I'll make sure, like, yeah. every couple of days at least. Uh-huh. Um, like, during the or week, your obviously, every day. Hurt. Not hurt, but, like, they don't, like, they're, like, not work. The way. Yeah. Like, I don't know how people, so like, I need long. prep or, yeah. like, I don't know how people can just go. Like, I am so jealous. Cause, like, I have, like, the stamina and the ability yes, to, but, you like, my, do. my knees and my hips do not cooperate in that way. Like I need to have you a good old geezer. I know. Well, it's not hell. It doesn't help working a manual labor job. Yeah, your whole that's fucking true. Adult life. Your job definitely destroyed your I body know. for sure. Oh man. We could get into um, that. That's a whole yeah, tangent. Yeah. That's a whole thing. Actually, I feel like that's kind of a good segue though, Is because it? we're talking today about our anxiety. I'm, I'm excited for this episode. I'm excited too. Like it's, it's, it's really fun. fine. I mean, initially when we launched the pod, one of the goals that we set out was to talk about mental health in a more like like normal the therapy word is like in vivo but like like irl sense you know yeah because you talk about like mental health theory and like obviously of we talk course. about evidence-based practice and relationship a lot. stuff through like dating yes. shows and reality yes TV, exactly yeah a lot of trojan horsing happening um y'all didn't even know it was happening <laughs> did you <laughs> we're tricking you but no um i want to talk about it in a more like personal way too because i yeah. think a people forget that therapists are people um i forget all but the time b so much of the work in my opinion of like sort of dismantling the mm-hmm. societal structure that stigmatizes mental illness is in like speaking openly about it yeah. you know um like when we were kids nobody talked about oh. going to therapy no it was or a joke like, on the the christmas the uh the santa claus movies and stuff yes. also to be clear i did just say i forget all the time to therapists being real people that was a joke <laughs> that was a uh a, a, a little I ode i know that. you didn't and you didn't have a reaction i was like let me just clarify that real quick before everyone comes out because that's like didn't people people really do like it's not even a joke like, yeah. people really do no they do forget that like yeah i think the internet people, and stuff and parasite yes. like, doesn't help yeah, you yeah it's very dehumanizing that's a whole nother thing anyways yeah. yeah no like the 
the Santa Claus movies, the goober ass. Oh, yeah, yeah, the therapist the guy. Yes, or, I forgot yeah. about that. The dad, yes. the stepdad who's a therapist. And Tim Allen just like, oh, you big boner, shut the fuck up, mm-hmm. let kids be kids, mm-hmm. you know, kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and like they're always when kind of actually poised. his advice was like really good. No, like they're always poised <laughs> from this like, God, what a wet fucking blanket. Yes. You know? Yeah. This man yes. who's looking out for our mental health. We hate him. Yes. They painted him as like the character that was like the interloper. The bad and, like, guy. Yeah. The annoying fucking. Yes. Yeah. Wet blanket. You're so right. I completely forgot about that. Mm. Wow. I haven't watched this movie in, in Well, in he's like ages. the caricature of the like the. The sweater vest yes, and the gray the beige sweaters. and the like. Which also is such the, a personal hey, attack because when you hey, work in an Timmy. office building, mm-hmm. it's cold. That's why sweaters wear oh, cardigans so much. I wouldn't know because I outside. Yeah, you work in I've the elements. Gotten, I've never gotten to work out. I'm a fucking outdoor The cat. amount of times I've gotten a text message from you being like, oh, I'm glad that I brought extra socks and underwear to work today because it's pouring rain and I'm like soaked or like oh. my boots are <laughs> filled with water. I'm such a diva though at work. Like at my worst, <laughs> I'm like... I'm like, if I get fucking soaked, I'm going home. I'm changing. <laughs> or I'm, yeah, I'm going home. as you should. I'm that's a diva. Not, that's not appropriate working conditions. You should be allowed to when wear dry clothes. But when you're on the first string, you're allowed to be a diva. I think. That's I fair. Think. Yeah, you are the gold star employee. I, I you can't. are the golden child through and through. I know. I can't help it because if not, then I'm a <laughs> failure and everyone, I will be a letdown to everyone and what everywhere. What a perfect dovetail. So yeah, anyways, that's why we're talking about anxiety today. I think it's helpful so to have like a real conversation about it. I think so too. But also because in us just like talking about it amongst ourselves and yeah. also the work we've done in our own individual and in couples therapy actually oh, yeah. um we have discovered that like in theory we have the same if not like similar issues in terms of like having oh, clinical anxiety yeah. right except that the way that it presents for us what it actually looks like and then how we deal with it are like completely same, opposite same, but so different which also like i love because we talk about us being a case study for like fat phobia and all of that stuff oh, right yeah, okay. that like we eat the same thing and like our bodies oh, look entirely different i eat way not worse but i eat way you different eat, yes i volume yeah you I, eat a lot more than i do and yet our bodies look uh vastly different the time when because you're on your high protein diet for your recovery <gasps> and i was like oh my god i'm not eating enough I have, I didn't I like eating, I so realized so eating quickly. a high protein diet was probably the most stressful part of recovery honestly yeah because I was supposed to be eating high protein and low sodium to like help I don't know like my surgeon said that eating a lot of protein is good to give your body like the building blocks which makes sense you're recovering your body's like sure. putting stuff back together right like, yeah, yeah. Um, and also the low sodium is good because they didn't want me to swell obviously because if you're swollen and then your incisions pull apart then you've got big problems Wait, yeah. um so like fair but like can I just tell you the like logging of like how many grams of protein are in particular things was like such a mental fatigue. Like, oh, you're like, so I don't care anymore. Like I just want food. Stress. Well, and that's also why I, at, towards the end, just ended up giving up and like eating the same like foods that I knew the protein count yeah. for. Cause I was like, I don't know. I have good, the all the nutrition facts. Also, I'm so tired of this. Can we just talk about, I am so huh? incredibly proud of you because like having to log all of that, it's not log, but like mentally, have yeah. a mental load of it. Yeah. Um, I think would have turned Mickey like a year, two years ago into a, um, like an in danger. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. that would have been a very yeah. stressful and I think more yeah. tumultuous I like recovery process going in. Um, so I yeah. think that's just like the validation to like how, Thank you. you know, also like you did a lot of fucking work. I don't think I've known yeah. anyone to go to three therapists, but I did. You did. You absolutely did it. You did it. You crushed it. You did it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I did it. Yeah. Thank but yeah, you, no, actually. seriously, like you like deserve all the credit because that could have been I a very fucking that. scary time. Yeah. And I think you did so well. We actually, I think, I mean, I had that thought going in and we had like mm-hmm. a brief conversation about it at the beginning because you were like, are you okay? I know. When you started, I was like, I was like, oh God. Yeah, you're like, is I'm this going to be okay? The, the alarms did not wait yeah. this time to start going off. They immediately were like, err, err, <laughs> DEFCON, uh, whatever. I know, whatever. But I told you, I think part of what made it easier is that I was adding and not restricting. Totally. Right? I was I know, like, we ate more during your recovery than we ever had. Oh, like, God damn. It also e- really highlighted how much my ADHD gets in my way of mm-hmm. being able to like regularly nourish my body. Oh, Because totally. I was like aware constantly that like three meals, two snacks, three meals, two snacks. Uh, no, and, like, honestly. Counting the yeah. protein and like making sure that, because my goal was to hit 100 grams of protein in a day every yeah. day, which was like, which, like not hard. Like some days it's hard, it's but then some days it's a so, lot. It's like so funny because like some days, which is also what's crazy because like you can, like have like one meal 
and you're like, wow, that's 50 grams of protein. And then other days it's like, fuck, I can't scrap uh-huh. together two pieces of yes. protein if I fucking if ate I the try cow to. itself. Yes, yes, no, literally. Um, yeah, I was eating a lot of like the same foods though. Mm. Um, but the hard thing was like balancing the low sodium thing because like, oh, like red meat, packed. for example, has a lot of protein in it, but it's also like somewhat high in sodium yeah. depending on like how you prepare it. Safe and like, yeah. Yeah, I but, ate a lot of tuna and a lot of cottage yeah, cheese. Yeah, I love tuna. I love cottage cheese. God, I love tuna. <laughs> Fuck, Anyways, man, I could eat tuna every single day, but I know. <laughs> you do also, love we tuna. talk about because I'm like, oh, then you get what mercury poisoning or whatever. Yeah. But then yeah. also like the microplastics that are in all of our food. Yes. And like we're all I being am, slowly poisoned. I am, you know. Yeah. You just take your pick. Millennials so, like, are gonna have like plastic poisoning. Yeah. Like how said, boomers fuck, had lead would we poisoning. We rather have lead poisoning or well, I think lead poisoning fucks with your brain. Well, yeah. Plastic poison might fuck with your brain too. Yeah. You just don't know it. Yet. I think I choose plastic though. I think I choose also because I don't too. have a choice. We don't have we a are. choice. Yeah, we're being poisoned by microplastics, and I don't want to add lead poisoning yeah. on top of that. So. We are the plastics. Uh, <laughs> we are the plastics. What's that from? We're the mean girl? girls. Oh, no, mean that's girls. from Mean Girls. Oh, are they called the plastics? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the cool goth. Alt yes. character. Yeah. Called, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Janice Ian. Yeah, calls Janice. Them the How could I forget? I know. Also, Mickey to this day, I have seen uh, Mean Girls like a hundred fucking times. That is not true. You've seen it like twice. And okay. one of which you fell asleep. I fell asleep. What, what did I? I haven't even gotten to my point yet. <laughs> and you've already proven it for me. I fell asleep one time. You did. At the, it was late as shit. We were at my house. We were teenagers. You were in high school. Yeah. And I was tired. But also, to be fair, this was during the height of like the Mean Girls fever people were so worked up about that movie people loved it at that time and i just wanted to share it with you and you um, fell asleep and my i know i didn't look at hurt. The... don't worry about it nothing to see here please, it's totally fine please i'm rotating this after no this. <laughs> i like to have things to fidget with i, I know i know you do it. yeah and it's the whole thing this it's thing will slowly become so good it's so good anyways what else tell. is so good um yeah so we're talking about our anxiety today yes. so i thought it would be kind of fun for us to start with talking about our actual anxiety symptoms, like things that come up for us. Because like our types of anxiety are like similar, but very different in my opinion. Okay. Like we've talked about this before. I think especially the reason I had this thought is because this year was the first time that I started to deal with like different anxiety symptoms. Okay. And I felt like so fish out of water. Like I don't know how to deal with this because basically what I'm alluding to is that earlier this year, Um, I've always had sort of like chronic, like underlying, I describe it as like sort of bubbling below the surface types of anxiety Oh that at times will like peak and become like Like severe. Like a little iceberg, like show themselves. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But for the most part, it's like less chronic in nature. It's like less acute, I guess is what I'm saying. Like more iconic. (sighs) Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, (laughs) But I... There was a thing that happened. I talk about it on the podcast with Hannah, um, the podcast that Hannah and I have called uh, Things We Hate It, but we won't get into all of that. But I ended up struggling with panic attacks for the first Mm -hmm. time this year. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you have like intermittently dealt with. And there was a point at which I was like right on the verge of a panic attack and I was like crying and freaking out. And you were like, let me get you an ice pack. And you like put an ice pack on my chest and you were being so kind. And I was like, is this how you feel (laughs) all the time? Like, how do you deal with this? Because I was like, suck. this fucking blows, yeah. dude. Yeah, it does fucking suck. That's I for real. hate this. I was yeah. like, I will take my like intrusive thoughts or like my like skin picking oh, or yeah. like hair pulling any day of the week. I can't take this. I don't have a fucking panic attack and then <laughs> itching at my skin. No, no, it was terrible. Yeah, anyways, that's just I guess, your opinion. Yeah, that's like more so the anxiety that I struggle with is mm-hmm. like the chronic stuff. Like I'm a fidgeter. I like bite my nails all the time. I like pick at my skin and pull my yeah. hair out and like all of those sort of like chronic it's also like it's like uh what's the word uh when you it's there the therapy word for it is uh body focused repetitive behaviors that's not at all what i was going to say but that sounds a lot better <laughs> um but yeah like uh, they're commonly associated with adhd and neurodivergency mm-hmm. um with ocd also um but mine is like more so an anxiety thing because i just like it, like all of that nervous energy just sort yeah. of like lives in my body and it needs to go somewhere. I and I, obvi- I struggle with the same thing too is like where yeah. uh, the term we use for me is uh, I idle very high. Yeah, because so, you do. Like we alluded to in the last video where when I wake up, it's like yes. brain empty, just go <laughs> like start moving. Like yeah. I have like strong like flight or flight. Um, yes, and- yeah. You're very much like, it's almost like you're driven by a motor sometimes. Like you can't help oh, it. Oh yeah. Which I think is also part of the hyperactive 
oh, uh, definitely. like ADHD thing. Because you are more like hyperactive ADHD. I'm more like inattentive ADHD. Oh, like definitely. My memory is shit, but you cannot sit still. No, I do have a really hard time. We actually talked about that too for a while. Because like, especially too before COVID, like we would, I would just, I would like, if we're sitting still, time. we're fucking wrong. Like we, yes. like hiking and errand running and like going to the Ooh, store and shopping you guys. and like. We've been on so many hikes. Do you remember that hike that we went on? Bug Springs Trail. That all trails absolutely catfished what us. What did it say? It said that the hike was like easy. eight miles. It was rated it as easy, low incline, and then it was like eight miles. That was. And I was like, we are can you talking do about this. soldiers? Or no, 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 no. That Bug one we Spring. got catfished also. Bugs, so, uh, yeah, that was awful. But Bug Spring Trail ended up being like like closer to 10 to and 12 miles. We did it around this time of year too, it and cold. it snowed. Yes. Um, I almost fell on my you ass. I've never gotten, I've never seen you cry so bad from being chafed before. I felt so bad, but I was like, we can't, I, I, like, I can't, you well, have also, to keep yeah, going. Because like we were, it's too late. Like we were on our way back oh, to yeah. the car, and it's like, what are you going to do? Also, the sun Stop? was setting. Yes. Like, we were literally running out of daylight. Yes. We it have was getting cold Also, and every dark. hill you come over, you're like, oh, this is the last one. And you're like, fuck. No, nope, How can this not more. be the last fucking one? The we did last... have some bomb-ass PB&Js on that trip, though. Yeah, we did. The last part of the trail was like a little spiral down this, like, incline. And you can see the parking lot oh. while you're, like, doing this. And I just started bawling because I was like, we finally no. made it. We didn't have no and lights. my butt cheeks are so We changed. had plenty of clothes, at least. Like, we were warm and comfortable and had yeah. water. But, like, yeah. fuck, man, God. that trip. It was so terrible. bad. Terrible. I sometimes terrible. do wonder about doing it again. I think that was the last hike we went on. Probably because it was a traumatic experience. I but just... we, we would do that all the time. Like oh, yeah. we went hiking in Sonoida all the time. You used oh, to go running with the dogs all the time. And I just go running by myself. Yeah. Well, it was also for good reason because our dogs have piss poor leash training. At least while running, you know? they just get so excited. And I yeah, get no, it. they're very happy. Yeah. The <laughs> we went to dog training classes, um, and the trainer repeatedly. It's not rude. <laughs> But it feels no, rude. rude. It feels like an attack. Savannah, honestly. at this point, is almost a senior citizen. She's like nine or ten. We don't know how old she is for sure because we Every adopted day at her. Class. But the Savannah dog is trainer, my dog, or yes. she's our dog we're together. Like her but handler. like, yeah, yeah. Um, and the trainer every day would be like, "How old is Savannah?" How old is Savannah? She's like nine fucking years old. And she's like, it? wow, wow, really? Are you sure? And we were I'm like, positive. Pretty fucking sure. Like, she's got the gray hair to prove it, you know? She's an old girl, but she you would not know you it. You would not know it. You would Especially not know it by the way she fixed, behaves. Her, yeah. her, little, her little dog Achilles. New, new lease on life. I um, You know what, though? And we've had this conversation so many times. I Because yeah. like, one of your friends said, like, you know, like it is, it can be annoying and it is annoying. But yes. like, it's also terribly and depressing. Yes. Sad. Yes. To watch them slow down. Yep. I and, remember you know, that. Like every I time I'm like, oh, this is kind of annoying. And I was like, you know, I'll take this. Yes. I'll take this honestly any day yeah. of the week over. Because she talked to me about that after her dog passed. Mm -hmm. um, and she was like, you know, I have to tell you, like watching your dog slow down, like once they slow down, they don't really ever pick back up like they mm -hmm. were. And she, you know, she was like, it hurt my heart knowing that like he was getting close to the end and yeah. like he couldn't really be the way that he wanted to anymore. And I was like, Oh my God! So, uh, yeah. So since that uh, conversation now, yeah, you want to have zoomies gets, and go ham and so like you know yes. as long as it's safe and yeah. within the confines of our, our nice little, little area. terrarium. Yeah, yeah. Go, go off, little girl. I know. I'm she's, not gonna stop her. She's so sweet too. She's just so happy. Oh, I know. It just loves people. She just wants so much. to be included. Yes. Oh, also, I do I think it's so her. funny though. We the thing about dogs uh, reflecting their owners <laughs> is so yes. true. But like we have it in the opposite. We're like yes. Olivia. Is like my uh, my anxiety yes. encompassed. Like mm -hmm. once, like so, we have breakfast. She'll she'll come back, lay down for a little bit, yeah, and then about 30, 40 minutes, or like if I come when I come home from the gym, like yeah. it is time to play ball, yeah, ball, like ball, ball. It is, but not in like the fun, cute way. It's no, like, like she's so insistent about yes. it. She will till her little nose. She's got like a longer little snoot, mm -hmm. and she will like <clears throat> and so <clears throat> like so. Oh. Like, uh, intensely and like aggressively that she'll boop her face Or she'll face like use her you. tail to like <gasps> like a little, a little like a little rude. dinosaur. So yeah. rude. She whacks our bed with her butt to like vibrate the whole bed. It's always like, on up, my side so that's how I wake up. up. Yeah. yeah. It's really aggressive. You would think like It's a lot. Yeah. Well, and you would think that we never like exercise or her take care of or like her, stimulate or, like, her little brain. Literally. I talked about this on my Instagram story actually that like all of the enrichment activities that we've tried to do with uh -huh. her if they're food based 
could not, could not give, give a, a fuck, fuck less, less. <laughs> could not care not. any less about food-based enrichment she literally does not give a single shit lives she breathes, hates them dies by that ball actively yeah. fucking hates any enrichment she's like this is that just getting in my way yes. yeah especially frozen things oh we literally have to microwave up. them for her she's such a prima donna <laughs> she's such a princess anyways but yeah so Liv is definitely like your dog in, in the that, sense yeah. that she's like very hyperactive, mm-hmm. um, and Vanny is definitely me. Like she, she Vanny idles she's down. She's a couch potato. Yes. She wants to just be left alone. Which I think to is her so devices. Uh, is a good segue too, because like that's the way I think. Because you're talking about our anxiety is the same, but also different at the same yeah. time. Yeah, is that we genuinely like deal with it so opposite oh a thousand percent so like if yeah. you're like high and like feeling it like really like really feeling it yeah yours is like the opposite of mine and to like it's yes. like in, like yes and clo- or like close down and yes like, the thing that happens to me when i'm really anxious is that i need to be like secluded oh i yeah. hide from like my phone i hide from the internet i hide from you i hide yeah. from everybody and i just want to like be under the sheets and just like please nobody talk to me the like rug, i don't yeah. i don't want to see the sun it, it from the outside i think it probably looks like i'm depressed but i actually a am little like, bit yeah it does i actually am like quite happy to yeah. be under the because it just it's like sensory deprivation mm-hmm. almost and i think that's part of the symptom for me too is yeah. that like it's almost like the way that i described it to a therapist one time is it's like having sandpaper on like your bare nerves like all the time like my, uh, it just feels like I'm overstimulated yeah, all the I fucking time. Yeah. And so sometimes when my anxiety peaks, the reason I want to like seclude myself is because I'm like, stop talking to me. Yes. I don't want to hear you. I don't want to know anything. I want brain empty. I just want to doom scroll and have like almost complete sensory yeah. deprivation so that I can like level set. Because the thing that happens when my brain is overstimulated is I get really bad intrusive thoughts that are like so disturbing. That's so funny because I'm the complete opposite. Like if I sit still. Really? Yeah. If That's I sit still. Crazy. Still. Yeah. And like have too much like free th- free time thoughts. Then you have intrusive thoughts. Yeah, definitely. Interesting. Yeah, what are your intrusive thoughts like? Can I ask that question? Is that allowed? Um, <laughs> Do you want I me to think, talk about I mine think instead? A lot of it, I think a lot of it just revolves around like an inadequacy. Mm-hmm. Or like an inability to complete tasks, or okay. like not having enough to show. It's very much the like capitalistic mind mindless drone thing, yeah, where like yeah. I need. So yours I is like an show. inner monologue. You're like talking to yourself. Yeah, definitely, I would say so. Yeah. Mine are I, well, actually we talked about this on the last episode because mine are more like picture based. Yeah. Or like like I have a lot of intrusive thoughts about like textures that squick me out. It's funny when I yeah I mine is definitely like monologuing when yeah. it comes to. Like no. how I talk to myself and stuff. No. I'm just so. I think when I, like when I'm at my worst, like I'm so mean to myself. Yeah, which um, I relate to that. Honestly. Yeah, I and I, I'm sure very, I'm sure most a lot of people do. Yeah, like, that's inner, very common. And just a very loud inner I critic. I can vouch for that. How cool! <laughs> what a fun thing to share in common. <laughs> um, but no, yeah. So I think like I definitely like the other day like after like it wasn't as physically taxing of a day at work and mm-hmm. I like came home and I was like I just need to go for a run honestly yeah like, I yeah, just need yeah. to get like I just like I need to get my get zoomies out. out yeah yeah um and so I feel like that just like that and the fresh air and like sun yeah um I could not I would not make it if we live somewhere where like oh where it's like cold oh, and dark yeah like for yeah. extended periods of time like I am a lizard Yes, through and through. through. Like, through. I need fucking sun. Like, I, I need that vitamin D. Yes. I will say that's one thing that we have in common, which is like being in the sun and like, oh, especially yeah. just lounging, like laying on like hot concrete, as weird as that sounds, is so soothing. There's just something oh. about it that feels like a reset button. Almost. The other, oh, yeah. And the other day when I came home, it was like coldest outside. Mm-hmm. But I was like, this one tank top I have smells yeah. so strongly of sunscreen. Like, even <laughs> after being washed and stuff, it doesn't matter. It's just the sunscreen um, tank top. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But like, sunscreen is like my, it is like simultaneously like, the most soothing it's yeah. like an aphrodisiac it's like the most <laughs> so wonderful funny. oh yeah like we talk about the summer the yeah. sunscreen smell scale that's so all funny the time. yeah that's true we really have pavloved ourselves into oh, associating sunscreen but like with certain yeah things. that some fresh air like move my body and like i'll be fine i'll yeah. be just fine that's really but funny. otherwise like when i can't get like when there's like certain things that don't line up i start mm-hmm. getting interesting getting squeaked out you yeah. know yeah. yeah, I feel like mine is the opposite where like if my brain is too overstimulated or too overwhelmed, then my anxiety starts to peak. And I think it's also a way for my brain to be like, hey, fucking knock yeah. it off. Right. Because I am like the person who will just like 
work and work and work and work. Like oh, this was a big problem I do during feel that. quarantine. Oh, definitely. Because, I know. Work life balance. Well, yeah, yeah. Like before quarantine started, I had a regular routine of like, oh, yeah. I would go to work, I'd see my clients, I would stay at work to finish documentation like 30, for like, minutes, yeah. yeah, 30 minutes ish. And then I would leave and I would go to the gym. And yep. my like regular routine was to just run for either 30 minutes or to run a mile and a half, whichever happened first. Yep. And then I would go home. And that was like such a soothing routine for me. Like I do really value routine for yeah. as much as I have a hard time. Like no, but like when you're it. in it, when you're in it though, like it feels weird when you're like, like out very of... situated. Yeah. And so being at home full time with like no outlet or recourse. Yeah. And also we were still working. Right. So it wasn't even like, I know. Oh, you know, everybody else was like making, you know, doing puzzles and making whipped coffee. And I was, I was so jealous. Still fucking working. I will die mad. Our ass is off. Yeah. yeah. And then, so, you know, obviously at the time we were working on the channel and stuff too. So we yeah. were just like doing more Work than we ever had. So I think sometimes when my brain gets overwhelmed, that's like its way of trying to tell me like you are pushing it. Right. Yeah. That, like you can't maintain this amount of mental focus or you're going to implode. Oh, yeah, that's, so why you burnt, almost, that's why you burnt the fuck out. Yeah, yeah definitely that makes, that. It makes total sense looking back on it now. Yeah, but I think my brain doing the intrusive thoughts thing is also like just almost like short circuiting in yeah. a way. Because <laughs> a lot of my intrusive thoughts are like, either like textures or like imagery that really squicks me out like the that's so funny that keeps coming up for you or like oh, your dreams even worst. too like have that thing where like yeah you're like your biggest enemy isn't a spider or anything uh, it's a big piece mm, of sandpaper yes yeah. or or like the trypophobia thing oh you i will just have that. constant intrusive yes. thoughts of those like images that make me want to oh it just makes my that's skin awful. crawl does that just happen and i can't help it they'll be like yeah like they'll be like can't... in my dreams i'll just be driving and i just no. like Ugh. Oh, it's awful. That is rough. But I also have weird intrusive thoughts. Sometimes I know for sure that other people do this because I've seen people make TikToks about it okay, and stuff. Okay. These are sort of funnier. Um, oh, we love lighthearted ones that aren't, <laughs> that aren't cryptophobia. But my brain sometimes, it will just do the thing where like I'll be like we have matches in our bathroom oh, for yeah. like, you know, when it stinks um, and we light a match. When it stinks. And <laughs> like our bathroom is just randomly stinky. <laughs> for after somebody takes a particularly dank shit, we light a match in the bathroom um, and my brain will tell me things like light your hair on fire light oh, your I hair want to light all the matches on fire all the fucking time I'm like just set it on there oh it would just awful. take a second yeah no oh, it's terrible yeah. so stuff like that happens to me a lot too that's usually my sign that I'm like hmm Maybe, I should, going on maybe I should do some journaling. Like maybe I should try some meditation. Ooh, actually, okay, good question. Do you like meditation? What are your no. thoughts about meditation? No, I think that's why I enjoy working on music so much. Mm -hmm. Is because like I, I really enjoy like a task or like something yeah. it's something challenging because it's like to me it's like a puzzle. Like, mm -hmm. you know, finding like you have all these different pieces and elements and stuff yes. that you get yeah. to put together and there's no wrong there's no right or wrong way to do it. Yeah, of course. Just whichever way that feels best. Yeah. But it is a challenge to make those pieces work together. Yeah. Um, like and so fit. I love the payoff of getting something that like works. Oh, um, I love that. And also like being creative is just the best. Yeah. But, like I just don't do like I can. I just get like like when I do that I kind of get sleepy, or like I get meditation. Like, yeah. Yeah, I feel that. Or like calming. I know I've tried it because we did that in therapy a good little bit too. I think mm -hmm. breathing and stuff definitely helps. Yeah. I think that's also why I enjoy running as well. I think why these all kind of tie together yeah. is because running obviously is focused around your breathing as yeah. well. Yeah, it's like a meditative um, exercise. Yeah, so it's so nice to like have a, a forced activity that like makes you think about how you're breathing. Yes. You know, in a weird yeah. way. Also, I know like most people aren't like I have like pavlov myself into enjoying running. I used to hate it. Um, <laughs> I know people really, it's a very polarizing activity. Well, I think it is. Too. I mean, because it's also, but like, it's kind of crazy when you think about it because like we're genetically built to like run. Yes. Like, which it's is fucking wild. crazy. Yeah. Um, it's kind of cool. But yeah, and also, I couldn't do it for so long because my knees. Yeah, because your so joints fucked. were fucked. Um, but it took like a two years of physical, oh, physical therapy. therapy yeah. yeah. Um, and so like, I don't want to lose that again either. That's so valid, there's some of that. Yeah. But also, yeah. too, like, I don't do a great job of listening to as much music as I would like to. Mm -hmm. um, and is, so it yeah. really is just like my favorite way. And I can like put my phone away. Yeah. I will say this year I have learned oh. the, the joys of dissociating more <laughs> than I ever have. And like, like on the Internet, you mean, or on your phone? Every, I'm on my phone. <laughs> um, and That's like, my fault. Probably. It is your fault. I'm I think sorry. you like, I think you trained me or I taught did. me how to dissociate. <laughs> Probably and I'm like, damn, fault. this shit is fucking nice. Might be. Just a little phone game or a little fucking, yes. just like the endless. Mindless. Oh, oh, it's so nice. It feels so good, but also like I don't feel good after, you <laughs> yes. know? Yes, that's the crux of the yeah, issue. Yeah, and I think, um, yeah. also too, I think like really struggling with depression this year too has like really yeah. been a, like yeah. uh, eye opener and like, um, 
the combination of depression and anxiety is fucking oh, debilitating especially dude. too the like the the juxtaposition of like i don't want to do anything but also i need to do something to feel better yes and so you're just like just stuck. stuck in limbo yes in fucking purgatory yes and you just and feel trapped yeah and like oh. i don't want to start anything but i can't not start anything but i have these things i need to do but i don't want to start them because like yep. what if Yep. You know, fill in the well, and then when you're like being really self-critical and like, oh, oh there's yeah. no point in starting anything because I like What's fuck everything up yes. or like I don't like anything mm -hmm. that I finish. Like it's just the worst. It's feeling. awful. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I relate to that a lot. I, I think especially because like the early part of our marriage, that was very much me. Oh, God. Because I, I was like, on the, yeah, I was like yeah. anxiety driven to like finish schoolwork because I was in college at the time, you know? Yeah. And so I had all of this anxious energy to like finish your work, do the most, mm -hmm. like get an A, right? Yes. Especially because my scholarship was grades based. And so I was like, you literally so cannot glad. fail. I'm so glad I didn't. I always did great in school too. I don't know how I would yeah. get into college. I, well, I did. I, I got my associates I feel like you and stuff. I loved college though. I don't, I don't know. I mean, like in the same way I... I feel like at the time, actually, you probably would have hated it. But like you now would love college. Yeah, I don't mind. Like College is fun. Going as like I, a real person. Well, and I think in, also in the thing about it that I loved was being on this like campus because I went to school in person for a lot of it and like the experience of walking to and from classes and stuff and being yeah. in this like little soup of people who are like all so different from you. Yeah. But like also similar in the sense that you're like here to accomplish kind of the same thing. Yeah. Like those are some of my favorite moments. So just like so nice. Chit chatting with strangers about like their majors or yeah. like, you know, asking people questions about what they wanted to do and like just learning yeah. about people's lives. No, mine like, was online so I didn't get any of that yeah. from my associates. I think there's a reason that college is usually like ground zero for people deconstructing conservative and oh, capitalistic ideals, yeah. you know, that like people turn into like radical leftists on college we talk about campuses? Well, we talked we talked about the other day about mm -hmm. the, was that Marx? Mm. With the drones? Mm -hmm. Or keeping, alienating Yes. The, I can't believe you were taught yeah. that in school and then yes. people still walk away bootlickers. Yeah. Yeah. What we were talking about is yeah. um, the Marxist theory about how capitalism serves to separate people from their intrinsic identities yeah, as so people. Yeah, alienate them. Yes. Yeah. So the goal from a capitalistic perspective is to alienate people from themselves mm -hmm. and from their community so that they identify their community as being their co-workers and their job um, so that they feel an intrinsic desire to be at work and abandon in their other identity because yes. this is the only place that they can find commonality or yes. community which is like very much what's happened right like we've seen third space third space like disappear oh, from uh, the yeah. united states at large and then and work we were, becomes the only place where you can like function and yes, be exactly and like actually make that's money. the only place that you can make friends that's yeah. the only place that you can like also exist because Without you have to work all the time charging you or costing yes. you something um and so we were taught that in school yeah. like we talked about marx's theory and how like you know this is a fundamental part of identity development yeah. um in in like a clinical perspective that like people who are trying to discover like who am i especially on the heels of like trauma uh, yeah. um it's important to do this work of separating yourself from your job because that's not your whole identity no. even though that's and what we've been culturally conditioned oh. to believe um but then there's people who left my graduate program still being like ultra conservative right-wing boot licking and it was just like were you present? Did you was your for brain like, any how did of you, these classes or like what did you do here exactly? This, you had to write a, a, you know? a thesis too to graduate and everything. Like yeah, yeah. Granted, it wasn't on Marxist theory. No, no, like no, the of course, capstone I mean, like, that I did was like a client presentation, but uh, still, yeah. like it's fascinating how like just, the dissonance that some people used to make it through our graduate program is like astounding. It's impressive. Yeah. I mean, we see it with like fundamentalism and stuff all the yeah, time. I, I guess yeah, maybe not fair. that astounding. Yeah, but, like, not. but it's still really disappointing. It's amazing. To me. It's I think irritating it, yeah. as fuck to me. me. Too. But yeah, anyways, I don't know how we ended up on that rabbit trail. But oh, because we were talking about depression and anxiety. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Just feeling like closed off from everything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think obviously I was sad to see you like struggle more with depression this year. Yeah. But I like remembered so much what that oh, felt yeah. like at the time because I don't, that's not normal normally my like typical struggle anymore anyways I like i was so, yeah. deeply depressed as like an adolescent and like in understandably early college. so yeah that's fair but now like more so i just have like the anxiety piece yeah also we just but, didn't have the tools i like, to like oh, acknowledge no. or like call it out i guess or, yeah like, no not at i was all. the one who suggested you went to therapy just because i was like this, this is, is not, not normal I, like, we dude. can't like we, yeah, yeah like, but also can we talk about how wild that is that like you know because we talked about at the beginning of the episode that when we were kids nobody talked about mental health oh you know? yeah but like I and like to the degree that I as you know at the time I was an adult I was like what probably oh, 19 1920 yeah easy um and like I didn't realize that it wasn't normal for people 
to just completely shut down for yeah. several days at a time and be like catatonic yeah. basically i just figured that everybody felt that depressed and like deeply alienated not from themselves in the world yeah. yeah for like days at a time and you were like baby no like that's not okay like you're not okay yeah. like you should talk to someone i don't about know where this. that came from for me either i don't know clear. but it worked out it worked out know. for both of us it's also Bless crazy you me too. for that yeah that changed the trajectory of both of our lives that's why i think it's so funny too when people complain about tiktok and like social media and stuff like that too because like of yeah. course for all the shit that it has created and made worse and stuff yeah. too is like the access to information and the ability to like yes hear other people's perspective the normalization of that yes, yes has been mm -hmm. so helpful well, and like genuinely um, mm -hmm. life changing for yeah. a lot of people. Like even the content on this channel and like generally yes. like on the internet, like, like you can think so anyways. you can like pick any flavor of therapist you want and find yes. someone who's probably like that TikTok <laughs> you saw the other day of the golden retriever lighthouse. Mm. Um, oh my gosh, I know yeah. we got absolutely just flamed by this just therapist. Just like described our relationship yes, to the T. Literally described us in particular. Yeah, <laughs> um, she was describing the dynamic between the what does she call it? The Golden like retriever husband. And yeah, and the lighthouse daughter, like the sort of emotional yeah. support eldest daughter thing. Yes, um, and our propensity to be partnered with the golden child, like and how a, nice a, it feels a, in the star beginning, and then how gold star student. Yes, husband. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just want a complete task for you <laughs> and know. play fetch. Well, yeah, and I think it's just funny how like that's a common enough issue that this couples therapist is on TikTok talking about this dynamic in relationships. But like, you know, people who are in the throes of that, like might not know that. No, you know, that's the other thing, too, we talked about as well, is that like the importance of going to therapy is like, mm -hmm. so we were able to clock this and like see it in ourselves. And like, we're yeah. like, wow, that's crazy sure. how like on point this is yeah, yeah um but then like our ability to like have that information like mm -hmm. know ways to use it and utilize yes. that like what do we do with that information yes. now i don't like, that's above my you can read <laughs> stuff all day yeah but, like having someone yeah. help you move through and like utilize those tools yes is like totally something yeah. different well and i think that's also why it feels so important to me to make the content that we make because yeah. like giving language to these phenomenons is a helpful thing to like clock that in ourselves yeah. right um and also for a lot of people the catalyst to get into therapy no, right because yes. like you were saying you can have that information all day but ultimately like putting it into practice is just a skill that you ideally like probably most effectively are going to build by having one-on-one -on -one facetime with oh. a clinician and it's like with everything else and you have to so practice. yes yeah exactly and so like having content that gives people the awareness of that mm -hmm. to like hopefully kickstart that journey feels so important yeah. to me because again like maybe this is a weird thing to say but like say so it. much of the content that we make is like the stuff that i wish somebody would have said to me oh, when yeah, we were yeah. young Younger, you know we that, talk like, about that all the time if we had learned or if mm -hmm. you had known or, yeah i want to be the person that i needed when i was 13 yeah. or 14 and just like adrift man like i had no idea and also like the adults in our life even if they did clock that something was wrong they didn't know what the fuck but to also do it was with so us. stigmatized yeah like I, yeah I, I, nobody wanted to have like the child. kid who was depressed yes, or in yes. therapy at the age of 12 or 13 that's not a fun way to exploit to utilize yeah. your kid as a, no, a exactly. token of your your mm -hmm. ability to raise this kid can't uh stroke my ego if yeah. they're a failure and no. mentally ill so no we talked forbid. about it yeah 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 no i think it's just it feels important to me anyways to like be those people and to just like talk about it openly and honestly because like even though nobody talked about it when we were kids it was still very much happening oh without you know? a doubt <laughs> like that's like the thing everybody like, that we knew was depressed like, or yeah anxious. like being um gay or queer or like yes like it wasn't just yes. like it's not like it just suddenly existed exactly like trans people didn't just suddenly start existing yes they've existed this ago. entire time yes we just didn't have language or supports to like create community or around that openly safety to do that yes like, exactly like making that uh, a resource that's accessible is not going to increase yes. the likelihood that your like, kid will be trans. It will just make sure that they're safe when if yes. they find out that they are. Or like when people you know? say, oh, going to college makes you a liberal <gasps> or like yeah. makes you queer. Like, oh, Literally like no. learning about experiences outside of though, like might give you an insight to some stuff that you might have been struggling yes. with in the first place. And helps and, like, you to uncover these yeah. intrinsic values about yourself that you've had. You just didn't have language that's, for. Yeah, that's the part, too, that always cracks me up, too, about that is that like, why would someone choose Yes. To not, you know, like you just like openly admitted then that you want to shelter your kids so that you can indoctrinate them to believe what you want yes. them to believe, as and opposed to them discovering what they want to believe yes. and what it and really their resonates own life, with them. Which just goes back to the whole okay. raising kids thing. But oh my god, I know. Yeah, um, we're not having a conversation about raising kids. Uh, not today. Anyways. But um, no, that's the other thing too. I was talking about like back to the golden retriever stuff and like completing tasks and stuff. Oh yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. my ADHD and like 
anxiety yeah. is like so focused on like completing as many things as efficiently as possible yeah. <laughs> in the hopes <laughs> that like once I'm done, yeah. I have like the attaboy from my oh, imaginary internal authority figure. Yes. That is like, okay, you have done enough today. You can rest. You can enjoy yeah. yourself. You can, except you know, have a drink, play some video rest. games. <laughs> yeah. Except that yeah. Uh, I very much do the like, next this thing, has happened. Like, okay. So I open a drawer and I grab, grab the cleaning supplies and I go start bringing the cleaning supplies to the bathroom. Then I'm like, uh -huh. oh God, the cat litter box smells. Yeah. So I go back, I grab a trash bag. That. And I pull up the trash bag and I start doing that. I'm like, fuck, the toilets are clean. I forgot to grab the toilet bowl cleaner. Oh, so I go no. grab that. And on my way there, I'm like, ah, shit, the laundry uh -huh. needs I didn't, I didn't start the laundry. So I can I grab that. Do that. By the night, I'm like, fuck, I have like six things. Yeah. And then meanwhile, I have chicken defrosting on the counter because I'm like, <laughs> ah, shit, I need to make food for the day. It's been sitting and there. And then yeah. next thing you know, it's 10 30. And I'm like, god damn it, I'm exhausted. Yeah. I just finished everything. And now yeah. it's time for bed. Yeah. Yeah. So there's never like resting. No, really, not that at all. Yeah. And so like it just is so, especially when you were going through your burnout, like mm -hmm. it's just so easy especially if you're not like taking steps to like do things to take care of yourself yes um i think i've done yeah. a lot better job of that recently and i think that's what's helped I a lot so but just like like no like i'm gonna sit i'm gonna do nothing like i yes. need either like 10 15 minutes or whatever yeah. like throughout instead of doing like this thing where we talk about the dating thing too we're like going on the like the marathon date oh yes. yeah like the same thing like if i just get a little bit of yeah. This here and there with like relax, relaxing and like. Yeah. It, like like leisure time. Yeah. Like eat, like kind of. I don't need to that. like marathon relax yes. for 12 hours. I can just like relax for an hour or yes. two every day. Yeah. I yeah. feel that. Um, I feel like also another thing that we have gotten better about too is like verbalizing our needs with each other because that was a big source of anxiety for us both. Honestly, yeah. Because I want to point out too that like this whole process that you're describing of like, oh, I'm going to go do this and like realizing there's something else that I need to do along the way. Oh, this yeah. sort of like traipsing back and forth that you do. Um, all of that's like happening silently, right? Like, oh, yeah. There's no awareness or like communication at all about you having this like but oh, yeah. inside of your head. <laughs> um, and so I feel like being conscious of that and like communicating a need around that is something that you've gotten so much better about. Oh yeah. Because Honestly, I'll like, that. I'll take that credit. I'll yeah. That. Like now I feel like we're in a place where you'll communicate to me like, Hey, I'm trying to go like clean the bathrooms, but like the litter box really stinks. So like, can you take care of that? Or like, Hey, yeah. this like food on the, or like, can you pull my chicken out of the fridge? So it'll defrost on the counter or whatever Yeah. to like take some of that off your plate so that you're not doing like 13 things until like right up until the moment yes. that we go to bed because then we end up having like leisure time together, oh. which is my, favorite no i know i feel like too, that's why like i know we've been talking so much about balders and we won't like yeah. talk too much but like us playing video games so these fun. last six months has been yeah. like a absolute like 180 i really like because before that i don't remember the last time i played like i think like deep rock galactic a little bit like the mm -hmm. witcher a little bit but i'd already beaten it and stuff yeah. like you used to play um overwatch every now and again with like friends from oh, work like and for, stuff forever that was like yeah you it was think, years, that was like ago, years ago like yeah. back when it was like actually good not the yeah no, weird shallow really fucking shell of a game that it, it yeah. is now this was when it first came out yeah but like yeah like i just like we just stopped Mm -hmm. doing that and then like even watching tv like my friend would be like oh are you gonna oh, watch this show yes and i'd be like ah uh, you know we don't do that and the the running joke was like if anyone would ask me a show at work my friend my best friend would be like i ah, don't even bother like he's not gonna watch <laughs> he's it he's never seen um, it um yeah and so we made like an active effort to like start watching tv again yeah and it's and been so fucking together. nice yeah it has been so nice yeah that's why we've been working our way through like older movies and stuff i think especially like during my surgery recovery we were like well we have fucking mm -hmm. downtime now you know but i am really proud of us though because i think our anxious little selves before would have been like, oh, surgery, downtime, what a great time. Do work. For us to like start a project yeah. or like, you know, since you're just sitting on the couch, why don't you like work on some stuff for the channel or like whatever. Yeah. Um, and we made a conscious decision to not do that to, like, and to like rest push and back on this very anxious way of being of like yeah. constant productivity because we both do that to be clear. oh yeah like if we have a week off it's like well we got to have something yes some grand like repaint the whole house you yes. know like have something yeah. to show for it has to be there has to be productivity in some way or another um but i feel like we've gotten a lot better about really trying to reject that mentality and like reclaim our joy in like just yeah. sitting and being lazy that's why like especially i think i talked about this before but like mm -hmm. i have chosen to reclaim the term lazy oh, yeah. as like a positive thing like i love to laze and i want that to be a thing i love about myself well you know? i think too it's like i know it like always comes back to this but it's like inherently anti-capitalistic yes. to like do that because like yeah not being productive is like, like a direct but, fuck you yeah but like, like it shouldn't be no exactly like yeah 
like we're just we should be just allowed to yeah but i think it does kind of help a little bit to like weaponize the like oh. um like the petty yes like, yes it does it does yeah <laughs> like rebellious part of my soul that's yes. like i don't want to do what you're telling me to do you know like it sort of helps to capitalize yeah. on that energy well i think we sure. talked about that too especially for me too because i went through my like my like midlife angsty teen phase again because <laughs> i didn't like really get to do that growing up um yeah. it was very important for whatever reason that i'd be straight and narrow and yes. never do any drugs and never never like, do anything bad don't don't Always get in good. trouble god forbid also Make like that's the time proud. we should have been getting in trouble literally um i know especially too before phones and stuff were a thing it, like yes before like, all of our behavior not, was being recorded yes, for posterity exactly. just do um, and say silly shit i guess shit. if you ever run for office we're good to go because we don't have like any fucking scandals or anything that's true but like otherwise yeah. like very straight laced yeah so it's been nice to like kind of like take that back and like be like no fuck yes. you like I'm yeah. not gonna do what you tell me. Um, <laughs> and yeah, exactly. No, I think the yeah. the like rebellious spirit part of that is also like an inner child work thing. I think it is. Um, because let's oh, we be talked honest. about that too. What is your what age is your inner child? Oh God. Are we allowed to say? It's like yeah, it's like no, your, I, it's like having your what's that? The, your therapist was like very into IFS. Mine was like not quite so much. Oh okay. Um, but. She did like talk to me about inner child work I, a fair amount. Yeah. I think, do you have an age like off the top of your head? Cause I'll have to oh, think like about 14, it. Oh, like 14, 15, sec. 16. Oh, really? Wow. Oh, yeah. That's way older than mine. I don't know what it is. It's so crazy. I, and I wonder if there's like any research or anything to, it just, it just feels like something got hung up there. Yeah. And like the more I dig up, like that feels like the most time. I think, you know, the thing we talk about, um, and you said this in one of your videos. Um, yeah. We'll link that up here. The ADHD <laughs> video, I think, or okay. like, when you haven't got a chance to get your zoomies out, yeah, I feel like, and like when you get home with your care, you're like, oh, restraint collapse. Yes, yes. I feel like there was just like I did that for like years. Yeah, like oh wow, that yeah. whole like adolescent period of time. Yeah, basically like all like of high school. Collapsing. I feel like I was so worried and nervous about getting into college yeah. and stuff, and like except you never collapsed right really. Yeah, and so I just kept wow. on going on for so long, and then. So yeah, so I feel like that now hurts going, my heart. Yeah, I've I've like dealt with that a lot this year. I feel oh, like I feel I like that. Yeah, actually, that's a good point because when you like say it like that, I think you have like, yeah. It's almost like your your brain and your body were finally like enough. Like you can't yeah. keep doing this. Well, and it's the thing you talk you about know? like finding yourself. I don't feel like I've actually felt like myself up until the last like year or two or so. Yes, which me is too. crazy. I also wonder if that me work too. would have happened during COVID because my anxiety was so like task yep. focused and driven by doing things yes i was not I, I i do not i did not like resting yeah i did not like being no. still because if i was being still like no, yeah. the bad thoughts would creep in <laughs> and stuff you know yes um yeah and so just like by like a shark like just go forward yeah. you know keep moving yeah yeah just keep moving no i feel like my inner child is way younger than that oh really um i think like realistically probably like five or six wow really yeah i'm so interested which also so is probably like, just like indicative of like childhood trauma, trauma and yeah. stuff yeah because i think that was like the age that i first became aware that it was my role to like soothe and caretake other people yeah um and so that was like a, a fundamental part of my identity as a kid which is like you know the stuff that i ended up unlearning in the last couple of years and yeah. like you know we've talked a lot about how the I caregiver feel, role really like you want to like you really want to push yes. back against that well yeah. yeah and i feel more myself now than i ever have but i think because i've done some really conscious working through yeah. like you know i just sort of like i was assigned this role of like fixer oh right like, from oh, like yeah. i remember from a very early age being the person who would just like you know, I was the, we talked about this, like I'm, I was the barometer for Absolutely. our home yeah. that like anytime the tension got too high, it was my job to like diffuse and like make it all go mm -hmm. away, you know? And I just like fell into that role in all of my relationships. Like a role you, you didn't ask for or like yeah, you didn't even know you were, you were feeling. It became my profession. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden it was like, I woke up one day and was like, hold on a minute. I fucking hate like, but also like, I don't feel like anybody knows me. Right. It was like this weird realization of like all of the people in my life with, except maybe you really know this version of mm -hmm. me that I have presented to them because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings yes. because I want to be useful to people because I want people to feel seen. Right. Of course, of I would course. never want to make somebody feel invisible. Like I did when I was little. Um, and so like, but these people don't know, like actually who I am. Well, that's right? the thing we talk about too, is like when you 
are when you say yes to everything and everyone, uh-huh. and of course everyone yes. likes you and you're a well liked person. Yes, exactly. You're so cool. Yeah. And but like, when of you course, finally start to like put your boundaries. foot down and say, I don't like that or people I don't do want to do that, respond. then all of a sudden yeah. people don't seem to really like you all that much. But it's because they've gotten used to this version of you yes. that is almost like devoid of humanity. They've got right? like there's no mirror. wants yeah. or needs. You just become them. Basically, you yeah. just become whatever they want you to become. And they know they can go to you because, of course, yes. they can because they know they're going to, you're yeah. going to say because what you they want. Because you always have space and you always yes. have time and you always have emotional real estate for them. But, like, the reality was that I was just stealing emotional real estate for myself to yeah. give to everybody and else. And you had none left for yourself. Yeah, exactly. And I th- so I, I feel like a lot of the work there has just been in, like, unlearning that and, like, yeah. being really conscious about, like, I actually am a fucking human and I do. And you deserve to take up <laughs> needs space. And wants. And yes. so, you know, I'm not going to fixate so much on like, you know, the anxiety of like, I want people to like me or I yes. want to be useful or I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. You know, like you can be kind and also not abandon yourself. No, honestly. You know, and that's like stick up, and like stick up yourself and like still have, I think it's so interesting or maybe this is just for us. I don't know if mm-hmm. this is like a common experience or not, but yeah. just like from our own personal experience, you almost have to have like two group of friends. Like you have your <laughs> yeah. friend group that you had like before you started therapy and like uh-huh. start working on yourself. And then you have like the group Cause I always wonder that too. Friends. <laughs> yeah, because I always wonder that too with people who like have these childhood friends and like yes. and to be clear, like we're bitter and like have just had like per circumstance like yeah, things have like not worked out and like people will yeah, take but also of us, yeah. like with boundary setting and stuff and like just not putting up with things that you would have otherwise. otherwise. Yeah, yeah, and so it's like very I can see it being very jarring for people. Uh, like or like old friends and stuff and be like yeah. well you weren't like this before and it's like yes. well yeah because I wasn't being my fucking self mm-hmm. like I was yeah. I was doing my best to fit in and like you know mm-hmm. I think, you almost have to like find a new set of friends but I again. think for us though the thing that was different is that we held on to that part of ourselves for so long a long time and I think ideally what's happening for a lot of other people is that they're unlearning that sort of like childhood indoctrination mm-hmm. basically at the same time that their friends are you know, oh. and so while everybody else was doing that work, mm-hmm. we were committed to being the same people because of this anxiety about like not wanting to let go to, of, yeah, you yeah. know, and so it is almost like it happened all at once, which I think is also why a lot of our relationships <laughs> exploded in spectacular fashion because I it was like, like for once, from for one once. day to the next, we were entirely different people. I know we talked about that too. It's like lighting from, a like, match. Yeah. Especially yeah. during COVID and stuff and like not. Mm-hmm. Um, I know like we like happened. we like it's a caricature or whatever like a meme about the like the queer yeah. awakening or the no, literally. queer experience during COVID or whatever but, but like, like kind of also when you take some time to yourself and you're not so wrapped up in like what's happening externally yes, and in your you environment don't have to think so hard you're gonna about figure how out yourself you. yeah yeah exactly there's some reality like definitely some truth there I think so too yeah well and I think also realizing that being in control of everything is like the, not be, real oh being in, right? I, I want so badly we argue we argued about this like half an hour ago literally um yeah but like when i can't i think that's the thing too why like tasks satisfy that part of my anxiety Mm -hmm. so much because it feels like i'm taking back like a little bit of control yeah like for otherwise things that are just like yeah most most of life most of existence is like out of controlness yes yeah well and that was why i started having panic attacks earlier in the year is because so much of my anxiety before was something that I felt like I could control, right? Totally. I had never really had a panic attack up to that point okay. because I intellectualized really all of my thoughts and feelings. And so anytime That's that true. I would start to get emotionally overwhelmed, I would intellectualize and just think about it and it would like shut off my feelings basically. So I would be disconnected from my emotional yeah. self. But what started happening was realizing that I had all of this anxiety about things that I couldn't control or that I couldn't fix, right? Oh, like yes, I yes, yes. am an expert <laughs> at finishing tasks, succeeding at things, right? Being like well liked by oh. people and like, you know, succeeding at work and all of those things. So like gold star student. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I can control that. And I can like do my damnedest to make sure that I'm like meeting all of my expectations and checking all of those boxes. Right. But I started to have anxiety about things that were outside of my control and there was nothing that I could do consciously, logically, practically to fix it. And so I felt like I was spiraling. I just like lost it because I was like, I can't fix it. And it's freaking me the fuck out. (laughs) I can't like that shit sucks. Make it better. It's like such a helpless feeling. Yeah. But the thing that like made the difference for me is like embracing that I'm no more in control 
control of anything now than I was then, I just made it up, right? Like I was just living Uh, in this fantasy land of like, I can control things, right? I'm in control of the world around me and of objective events that unfold. Like, bitch, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, the fuck you are not. And like being made aware of that was really, really overwhelming. But I think like moving through, especially like with my Saturn return and all that stuff, like moving through that journey to embrace that like, it's fine, right? Like nothing changed. Like your perspective about it changed, yes. but your objective safety emotionally and physically is the same, right? Like it just doesn't feel like it, yeah. but you're still okay. Like it's all going to be okay. You can still work through this and like you don't it's have to be world. in charge of yes. everything for it all to be okay because you weren't anyways before. I think, you yeah, know? I think that's the thing that just like so, like so often comes back. Like you can't control, mm-hmm. you can only do your best at what yes. you put out there Yeah, and just like, hope that Otherwise, energy that's is it. Yeah. received well and mm-hmm. like go from there. And the funny thing is that it's such a simple thing to say, oh, right? Oh God, just like, but doing in practice. Just embrace that you're not in control, but like it's not that simple. No, fuck, it's especially when you've grown up like succeeding all. or like oh, over, over, over achieving and like mm-hmm. just like doing the most. Yeah. I think that was the other thing too that like we've like really struggled with too or like something that we continue to struggle with too is like at what point are you doing, it's like the date thing. Mm-hmm. Like was this date really good because because I had a good time because we yes, both because I'm a good conversationalist or because or, I actually like this person. Yes. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. such a hundred percent. Yeah. That. Like when you learn that, you look back on some of your dates and you're like, fuck man. Uh huh. Like, yeah. Damn, it was but me. it is like, it's the control thing. Yeah. You know? Like again, I want though, like, this date to go well. And so I'm just going to be like a reflection of me steering this conversation yes. to go well. But like, I don't, I didn't actually enjoy myself. Right. I'm just good at making and it's conversation. The ener- <laughs> like if the person isn't going to put in the energy yes. and the effort, Exactly. Like, why am I covering their half? Yes. The reason that I think this was fun is because I basically controlled the outcome to be fun for me. But like, also that doesn't like we didn't learn anything about each other then. That was like such a weird and like phony. (laughs) And that's like kind of what we did though. We just falsified. Yeah. We just expended all this extra energy and effort for like for what to make ourselves feel better. Yes. And that's the thing too. It's not inherently other people's fault. No, exactly. It's just the way this is why. Yeah, like people pleasing. Yeah. Like learning that people pleasing, people pleasing is actually is, is like such a manipulative that, behavior. Yeah. Not that it makes you a bad person, to be clear. Um, it's very like a normal it's a human thing and it's okay. It's not not something to shame. But trying to like people please your way through interactions is like actually unkind, right? Because you're basically just like not giving this person a chance yeah. to be authentic with you. It's kind of like lying in a way mm-hmm. to like Yes. But so then like this is the thing that I struggle with with my like social anxiety um, is feeling like people are pulling at me all the time because I have this people pleasing tendency, yes. except that they're maybe not, they're not actually they're not pulling actually, at you. We've had Mickey. that conversation a lot. Maybe they're literally just asking, are you free today? Mm-hmm. And nobody's going to be disappointed. Nobody's going to be mad someone's at you. Gonna, that's my thing, too. Is like someone's going to be mad at me if I they're, don't. Yes then then there will be consequences. There's no oversight committee that's going to dole out a C minus to you for not being the best possible friend that you could because you're just quite simply out of spoons today. And like, like, that's totally fine. Maybe nobody is trying to violate your boundaries. They're actually just asking you a question (laughs) and you're just like a chronic people pleaser who needs to like, let it go. Like stop trying to assign intent to people who are literally just asking you a question. I think the best way my anxiety is like described is like, once like so the people pleasing thing like mm-hmm. someone's asking or like uh, like requesting something or like simply asking a question yes and yeah. then like depending on how I respond and how they receive it like this story like I will <laughs> paint a picture this whole narrative wider yeah than all all yeah. the books combined mm-hmm. um, with every possible outcome and you'll live there yes just for like a while. fucking rent free yeah and mm-hmm. get stuck there yeah and in reality like none of that has happened no exactly yes yeah okay so i think like to finish out the episode okay talking about some stuff that actually helps us deal with our anxiety like okay. things that have been transformative or useful or fun okay. or just like you know stuff like that would yeah. probably be a nice place to wrap up the episode i think does, obvious oh i was gonna say does anything come to mind immediately? well i mean like running and stuff for me i can't tell if i think it's the mixture of things like being outside mm-hmm. the sun Fresh air, music. I think music is like definitely like my coping, not coping per se, but like my like. You can say that. I yeah, think like that's allowed. Like, not that like you don't need therapy, you need music, you know, like that sort of thing. Not saying that. Um, oh no, yeah, but, but yeah, like that. I think just the combination of it. Of um, and also like it is a task. It is kind of arduous, but it's like simple. Yes. It's not like yeah. too you know like it's not too mentally involved. Yeah, but not so much that I can like turn my brain off and I'm dissociating. Yeah, there's you know what a I'm balance saying? there. Yes. Yeah. Um because like that. <laughs> dissociating is nice, 
but and I don't. I can really feel helpful. it. It's not helpful. Yeah. Um. I so that. I think that'd be my first one. What else do you okay. have? I think music is a big one for me. Totally. Um. Because it is kind of that balance of like I need something for my brain to chew yeah. on because with no sensory input, yeah. then like my ADHD is going to run wild and I'm going to feel understimulated. Yeah. Um. But also having something that's not so stimulating that I'm distracted because my thing is the intellectualizing. Mm-hmm. If I think too hard about it, then I stop feeling things. Yes. So I have to find the sort of balance of like making sure that my brain's busy enough that I'm not like distracted and like lost but also not so busy that I have effectively dissociated from my feelings yes. and so music serves you that like purpose for yourself. me a lot because yeah. I have like a billion playlists on my Spotify that are Your suited so. for like particular moods yeah. you know and so anytime I'm feeling like particularly in my emotions <laughs> I have like a playlist that will help me sort of like deep or, or think more deeply yeah. about like my emotional state and like what's going on for me you know i uh i feel like completely i feel like we've both been playlists we both are playlist people yes like which so is funny because so. i didn't used to be i used to be the person who just liked songs oh on Spotify. my god you used to have huge. one giant thing i was like this is a I joke i still have it to be oh playing. and your card never shuffled <laughs> yeah. for whatever reason the shuffle doesn't work in your car when it's on bluetooth so it's just like the it's same so 12 songs as are on our way to our regular places yeah um, which is why my rap is so fucked i think it's, it's so, my fault. no honestly it's so funny yeah um i'm trying to think what else i I think you know what has also I think having like more green like the plants and stuff <gasps> have yes. been such a, cause I feel like space. we have like little like obviously keeping the dogs and the cats alive are one thing of course but like having the plants just kind of like you know it's just like something you have to like check in with or yes. you have to keep it you stay aware um yeah. and like sometimes it kind of sucks because you're like oh god I don't want to kill these mm-hmm. but then also it's like very it's, stressful. it's just very um rewarding yeah. after you like, do a good water I and did they just not... perk right the fuck back up <laughs> like it's the best I did not have on my 2023 bingo card that Aaron becomes a plant zaddy but I'm really very slowly. here for the transformation. I keep ours I'm a alive. Big fan. I keep ours alive. I do. No, you definitely good. do. My peace lily was so dramatic and like refused to grow and now she's flowering because you started taking care of her. So thank you for that. No um, big deal. I think honestly the other thing that came to mind for me is like having hobbies. Oh my as god. As weird yeah. as that sounds. <laughs> because I think a lot of my anxiety gets hidden in being overproductive and working and, and like so product and having hobbies that I just feel naturally drawn to and yes. want to make free time for has helped a lot because in that time that I want to be working on a hobby or just like you know yeah. leisuring it will come up that like oh wait I'm feeling some type of way yeah. it almost is like grounding in a way because it is you like and grounding. I are yeah. so at least for me especially I'm such a like I get lost in my own little brain. Yeah. Um, and I will like forget that I have like a meat suit, you know, like I forget to eat all the time. Like Same. this happens. We literally walked into Mod Pizza last night and I was like, fuck, I, I did not yeah. realize that I'm hungry until like, I damn, smelled when was food. Last time I, ate? <laughs> I was like, yes. oh no. So like that happens to me a lot with like my emotions and stuff. Yeah. So having like built in time to like leisure sort of creates this opportunity for my body to be like, Excuse me, hello. I think, I think thing, you're like, anxious, Building bitch. in leisure and like not feeling guilty about it has been like yes. like watching TV so and like watching healing. like we finished so many TV shows this year. And I'm like we so proud so of us. Fun movies. I know. I had like, such a really good time. Like doing actually that, sitting and watching it and like being not yes. like watching it not and being on, on your phones. phones. Yeah. Yeah. Like just sitting being and watching present. has been like yeah. really nice. We've also had some really good cuddle time on our new couch. Oh. So I I'm trying I'm not to plug them too much, but the love side couch was worth the money. Our couch though. Yeah. I think it's mostly just that like the the seats are really deep especially if you're like a cuddly person Mm -hmm. i think any couch that has like really deep seats like that is gonna like serve a similar purpose where it really does feel like cuddling on the bed i feel like we have a bed in the the living room room. and it's my favorite i I wouldn't i wouldn't i could not go back to that other one (laughs) no no all right. I think that's a nice place I to wrap up the that. episode. Yeah. Great. Ready to get out of here? Yeah. Let's do it. Um, thank you guys for hanging out with us. I know that this conversation was probably a little bit different than our normal uh, yeah. happy-go-lucky content, but it felt like it important, important and fun. I had a and good time. And it's why we started the podcast, so yeah. we, we got to give you the good hard hitting <laughs> stuff when we can, you know? Yeah. Uh, let us know what your thoughts and feels are about yeah. the episode. Um, obviously, if you want to support the pod, you can like and subscribe and like, yes, you know, please. do all the things. I forgot to announce the name change at the beginning again. It happens. Uh, We announced this in the last episode at the end, and I meant to say this at the beginning. But as a quick uh, heads up, the podcast name is going to change ever so slightly. We had a bit of a situation that it's fine. It's not better help, I promise. (laughs) Just out of respect for some other content creators, we're going to change the name of the pod. Um, So be aware that'll be happening if you see that change. That's why. But still come Um, back and listen. We're still the same. Yes, I was going to say, otherwise the podcast itself, the actual podcast is literally the same. Nothing's changing except for the logo. 
Like so. changing our clothes, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's that. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, we appreciate you guys being here. And we'll see you for the next episode. Okay, cool. All right. Bye. Bye.